Since its establishment in July 1958, the U.S. government has spent nearly $650 billion in NASA funding. The funding has birthed several space mission projects, such as the Voyager 2 spacecraft, which made a close flyby of Neptune on August 25, 1989. Nothing has returned to Neptune since, but that may be changing soon, as scientists have recently found out information about the planet that challenges our most fundamental understandings. So what new study on Neptune shocked scientists? And why do experts finally believe it's time to travel back? Let's find out. Discovered in 1846, Neptune is unlike any of the other planets in the solar system. Neptune is not visible to an unaided eye and is the only planet found by mathematical prediction instead of empirical observation. Like Mars is considered the Earth's twin, Neptune's twin is the nearby Uranus. Although Neptune is physically smaller than Uranus, it is much denser and has no well-defined solid surface because it primarily comprises gases and liquids. The world knew nothing about the existence of Neptune until 1821 when Alexis Boulevard, a French astronomer, published astronomical tables of the orbit of Neptune's twin Uranus. When Boulevard observed the data further, he discovered substantial deviations from the tables. This led Boulevard to hypothesize that an unknown body was disturbing the orbit through gravitational interaction. However, he didn't pursue the hypothesis further. 1846, British mathematician and astronomer John Couch Adams and French astronomer Urban Le Verrier began work on Uranus's orbit. The two scientists worked independently, and from their calculations, they predicted the existence of a new planet. However, Le Verrier sent a letter to the Berlin Observatory astronomer Johanna Gottfried Gall to search the planet with the observatory's refractor. On the evening of September 23, 1846, the day Gala received the letter from Le Verrier, he discovered Neptune, just northeast of Iota Aquarii, which is one degree from the five degree east of Delta Capricorn position that Le Verrier had predicted it to be. It was about 12 degree from Adams's prediction. Initially, there was a debate on who had actually discovered the newest planet and deserved the credit, as the French science community was pitched against their British counterpart. Ultimately, an international consensus gave joint credit to Le Verrier and Adams. In the early years after its discovery, people often referred to Neptune as the planet exterior to Uranus, or Le Verrier's planet. Although a couple of names were put forward, the international science community settled on Neptune, which in Roman mythology is the god of the sea. Until the discovery of Pluto in 1930, Neptune was the farthest known planet. Pluto's discovery relegated it to the second farthest known planet. The only time it was not occupying this position was the 20-year period, from 1979 to 1999, when Pluto's elliptical orbit moved it closer to the Sun, and Neptune became the ninth planet from the Sun. If you take a cursory look at Neptune's internal structure, you will find that it resembles Uranus's. It is primarily made up of ice and rock. The core of Neptune is filled with iron, nickel, and silicates, and its interior model has a mass that is 1.2 times that of Earth. The pressure at the planet's center is 700 gigapascals, GPA. The planet is a gas giant like Jupiter and Saturn, and its atmosphere is composed primarily of hydrogen and helium, alongside traces of hydrocarbons and nitrogen. Hydrogen is about 80%, while helium is about 19%. The planet's atmosphere forms about 5 to 10 percent of its mass. If you traveled down its core, it would increase to 10 to 20 percent. Descend into the lower regions of Neptune's atmosphere for a minute, and you will notice increased concentrations of methane, ammonia, and water. The planet's mantle is equivalent to 10 to 15 Earth masses and is rich in water, ammonia, and methane. The icy mixture is a hot, dense fluid with high electrical conductivity, and is sometimes referred to as a water ammonia ocean. Scientists believe that the mantle contains a layer of ionic water where the water molecules break down into a mixture of hydrogen and oxygen ions. At some point in the superionic water, the oxygen crystal loses while the hydrogen ions float freely around the oxygen lattice. 
Water is not the only one that undergoes a chemical reaction because methane could decompose at a depth of 7,000 kilometers into diamond crystals that rain down like hailstones. This peculiar diamond-like rain is believed to also fall in Jupiter, Saturn, and Uranus. Experiments by the Lawrence Livermore National Laboratory suggest that the top of the mantle could be an ocean of liquid carbon floating with solid carbons. Imagine if these diamond-like hailstones were raining somewhere on Earth, or there was a lake where we could fish for these diamonds. You can bet it will be called a magical place. Neptune has a bluish appearance, and you can blame this on the traces of methane in its outermost regions and Rayleigh scattering. Yet the bluish color of Uranus is different from that of Neptune. Neptune's own is more saturated due to the thinner haze of the planet's more active atmosphere. Data from the Gemini Observatory show that Neptune has active and visible weather patterns, unlike the featureless atmosphere of its neighbor, Uranus. The weather patterns present in Neptune are driven by the strongest sustained winds of the planet, with the recorded wind speeds rising as high as 580 meters per second, ms. Unlike Venus and Earth, which are closer to the Sun and get to experience a heated temperature, Neptune's distance is why it is one of the coldest regions in the solar system. The temperatures at the planet's cloud tops are almost at minus 218 degrees Celsius, while the temperatures at the center are approximately 5,100 degrees Celsius. The planet is enriched with a faint and fragmented ring system dubbed ARCS. There is a similarity between Neptune and Uranus when you examine data images of its magnetosphere. The planet's magnetic field is strongly tilted relative to its rotational axis at 47 degree and offset at least 0.55 radius, or about 13,500 kilometers from its center. Scientists have hypothesized that the extreme orientation of Neptune's magnetic field could be due to flows in the planet's interiors. The field could be generated by convective fluid motions in a thin spherical shell of electrically conducting liquids that lead to a dynamo action. Observations of the planet have revealed that it is characterized by extremely dynamic storm systems, with the winds rising to 600 meters per second, ms. In 1989, the Great Dark Spot, an anticyclonic storm system, was discovered on Neptune by Voyager 2. Data from the spacecraft show that the storm system spanned 13,000 kilometers by 6,600 kilometers. The storm bore a semblance to the great red spot of Jupiter. However, when the Hubble Space Telescope observed the planet five years later, on November 2, 1994, the great dark spot was nowhere to be found. Instead, the telescope discovered a new storm in the planet's northern hemisphere. Another storm seen on Neptune is the Scooter, a white cloud group farther south than the great dark spot. From what scientists tell us, we still don't know much about Neptune. We are yet to embark on a space mission to study the planet closely. However, this will become old news when Neptune's Odyssey is launched into space. Neptune Odyssey is NASA's latest orbiter mission to conquer Neptune. For decades, most of the things NASA learned about the giant planet were from far observations by spacecraft such as the Voyager. There has not been any close observation of Neptune. That is about to change now with the development of Neptune's Odyssey. The orbiter is designed to study Neptune and its moons, especially Triton. The mission's concept is being brought to life for NASA by the Applied Physics Laboratory at John Hopkins University. The same laboratory designed the famed Parker Solar Probe spacecraft sent to orbit the Sun. Based on the current proposal, NASA has set 2033 as the launch date using the Space Launch System. However, if you consider trajectories using gravity assists at Jupiter, the launch date will be 2031. Either way, the spacecraft is expected to arrive at Neptune by 2049. That's 16 years of space travel. If you are surprised it is taking the orbiter this long to arrive at Neptune, remember that the average distance between the planet and the Sun is 4.5 billion kilometers. Also, it completes an orbit on average every 164.79 years. Once the orbiter arrives at Neptune, it will switch into a retrograde orbit of Neptune, study its moon, the Triton, and probe deeper into the planet's atmosphere. Neptune Odyssey's concept came to be because NASA's Voyager 2 is the only space probe to have visited the planet, completing a flyby on the 25th of August, 1989. Voyager 2 was launched on the 20th of August, 1977 to study the outer planets and interstellar space beyond the Sun's heliosphere. Although it started its journey 16 days before its twin, Voyager 1, it took a trajectory that took longer to arrive at Jupiter and Saturn. 
the trajectory allowed it to encounter ice giants Uranus and Neptune. After Voyager 2's mission was completed, there was renewed interest in learning more about Neptune. Over the years, different mission concepts were put forward, but they didn't see the light of the day. For instance, an orbiter to Neptune was included in the aborted Mariner Mark II program of the 1990s. In the 2000s, scientists at different U.S. institutions developed several mission concepts. Notable mentions include the California Institute of Technology and the University of Idaho. However, none of their concepts were selected for further development by NASA. When the 2011 to 2022 Planetary Science Decadal Survey recommended that a flagship class orbiter mission be sent to study a giant ice planet, priority was given to Uranus. Although both Uranus and Neptune were seen as alluring scientific targets, Uranus was preferred because of logistical and cost reasons. Nevertheless, if Neptune Odyssey were to be completed and launched into space, it is going to answer five primary scientific questions about the giant planet. How do the interiors and atmospheres of ice giant planets form and evolve? What is the cause of Neptune's strange magnetic field, and how does its magnetosphere work? Is Triton an ocean world? What causes its plumes? What is the nature of its atmosphere? How can Triton's geophysics and composition expand our knowledge of dwarf planets like Pluto? What are the connections between Neptune's rings, arcs, surface weathering, and small moons? According to the mission's concept, a 220 kilograms atmospheric probe will be released from the orbiter just before orbital insertion at Neptune. The probe will descend 37 minutes before into the planet's atmosphere to study its composition, dynamics, and processes. The probe will then send back data until it reaches a pressure of 10 bars. Once Neptune's orbit is completed, the orbiter will embark on at least 46 flybys of Triton over the four-year main science phase. The purpose is to achieve near-global coverage of the satellite while studying Neptune and its other moons. After that, Neptune Odyssey will approach closer to Neptune and its rings on a grand finale, then it will eventually be destroyed in the planet's atmosphere for planetary protection purposes. The expected launch mass of the spacecraft is 3,218 kilograms, and it would have a dry mass of 1,594 kilograms. The orbiter will be equipped to perform its objectives with its 14 scientific instruments, which include magnetometer, color narrow angle camera, ultraviolet imaging spectrograph, ion and neutral mass spectrometer, laser altimeter, visible near infrared imaging spectrometer, radio and plasma wave detector. Other instruments that will be incorporated into the spacecraft are thermal infrared imager, microwave radiometer, thermal plasma spectrometer, energetic charged particle detector, energetic neutral atom imager, dust detector, and public engagement camera. The design for the atmospheric probe shows that it will be equipped with eight scientific instruments, mass spectrometer, atmospheric structure instrument, helium abundance detector, orthopara, hydrogen gas detector, nephilometer, net flux radiometer, Doppler wind experiment, and public engagement camera. Do the findings on Neptune seem shocking? Wait till you hear about its largest moon, Triton. Triton is the largest natural satellite of Neptune and was the first to be discovered on the 11th of October, 1846. The discovery of Triton is credited to British astronomer William Lassell, and it came 17 days after Neptune was discovered. Over a century after Lassell saw Triton with his self-built 61-centimeter aperture metal mirror reflecting telescope, there is still a lot of mystery about the large moon. Triton is named after the Greek sea god Triton, the son of Poseidon, the Greek god corresponding to Neptune. It is the seventh largest moon in the solar system, with a diameter of 2,710 kilometers, and the second largest planetary moon about its primary, towing behind the Earth's moon. Triton is the only large moon in the solar system with a retrograde orbit, that is, an orbit in the opposite direction to its planet's rotation. Triton's retrograde orbit and composition are similar to Pluto, so some believe it is a dwarf planet captured from the Kuiper Belt. The Kuiper Belt is a disk in the outer solar system that begins beyond Neptune's orbit, about 30 astronomical units from the Sun, and ends about 50 astronomical units from the Sun. This explains why it is sometimes called the twin of Pluto. Compared to Pluto, Triton is the larger planetary body. Scientists have been fascinated by Triton because it is the only satellite of Neptune massive enough to be in hydrostatic equilibrium. More exciting is that Triton is one of few moons in the solar system known to be geologically active. 
The others are Jupiter's Io and Europa, and Saturn's Enceladus and Titan. Due to the geological activity on Triton, its surface is relatively young, with a few visible impact craters. Triton's surface is mostly composed of frozen nitrogen and mostly has a water ice crust. The Moon's core accounts for two-thirds of its total mass. Voyager 2 was the only spacecraft to have visited Triton when it underwent a flyby in 1989. The spacecraft noticed the Moon's surface temperature was minus 235 degrees Celsius. Nevertheless, space telescopes have succeeded in capturing data about the unusual satellite. Recent findings have shown that Triton has an uncommon atmosphere and a dynamic climate. If you observe the Moon's ionosphere, you will see that it is filled with charged particles and is ten times more active than any other Moon in the solar system. Typically, ionospheres are usually charged by solar energy. However, since Neptune and Triton are far from the Sun, what's charging its ionosphere? Scientists seek to answer this question by uncovering the mysterious energy source. Astronomers believe that Triton is an ocean world because it has plumes that are similar to that of Saturn's Enceladus moon. This has birthed a possible new mission called Trident. Trident hopes to explore Triton further and help scientists learn how bodies in the solar system evolve. According to a statement from NASA, the mission objective is to study the satellite's entire surface in greater detail. Trident aims to study the unusual icy plumes of Triton. Scientists have hypothesized that the icy plumes are likely due to water from the interior being forced through the moon's thick crust. The discovery of a subsurface ocean as the source of Triton's icy plumes would expand scientists' understanding of where water could be found beyond the Earth. Triton has always been one of the most exciting and intriguing bodies in the solar system, says Louise Proctor, director of the Lunar and Planetary Institute of the University Space Research Association in Houston and leader of the Trident Proposal Team. The Trident Proposal is one of the four mission concepts competing in a current NASA's Discovery Program round. If NASA commissions the proposed Trident mission, we are on our way to learning about the possible shared history of Triton and Pluto. We would also get to confirm if Triton has an ammonia-rich ocean underneath its surface and what resources lay inside. Thanks for watching. If you want to uncover more exciting discoveries like this, click the next video on the screen.